Now we're going to see that series do not all converge the same way when they are convergent and that um, we have a stronger kind of convergence than another. So we're going to discuss this absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. Let's consider for example the series alternating series of negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 over n. It's convergent by the alternating series test as we have seen because the sequence of absolute value of the general term 1 over n is decreasing with limit 0. Even though if we look at the series of absolute values of the term, it's a series of 1 over n, it's a divergent p-series, so it's not convergent. So the series is convergent but the series of absolute value of its term is not. If we compare with the series of negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 over n squared, it is also convergent by the alternating series test because the sequence of absolute values of the general term 1 over n squared is decreasing with limit 0. But the series of absolute value of the terms converges as well. It's a series of 1 over n squared which is a convergent p series because p is greater than 1. So that leads to the definition uh, the following definition. We are going to say that a series, the series of an, is absolutely convergent if the series where we change the general term from an to the absolute value of an, so we take the absolute value of the general term of our original series, this new series, if this new series is convergent again, then we are going to call the original one absolutely convergent. So in other words, a series is absolutely convergent if the series whose general term is the absolute value of the general term is also convergent. And we're going to call a series conditionally convergent if it is convergent but not absolutely convergent. So we've already seen examples distinguishing these two notions. Uh, the series of negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 over n squared is absolutely convergent. This is what we just have seen. While the series of negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 over n is conditionally convergent. So the name absolutely convergent suggests that it's a stronger way of converging. And indeed this is the case. If a series is absolutely convergent then it is in particular convergent. So let's see why this is the case. And to prove that we're going to simply observe that if I take the sum of the general term an with the absolute value of an then I get something that is uh, between 0 and 2 absolute value of an. This is because absolute value of an is either equal to an in the case where an is positive. In that case I get an plus an is 2 an which is also 2 absolute value of an. Or if an is negative then absolute value of an is negative an and what we have in the middle is 0. So in fact in these inequalities we have uh, always equality with one of the sides. But that means that if my series of an is absolutely convergent, that means a series of absolute value of an converges, and therefore so does the series of two times absolute value of an. And so by comparison, the uh, which is something that we apply for series with positive terms, which is our case here, by comparison, the series whose general term is an plus absolute value of an converges. But then we can write an as an plus absolute value of an minus absolute value of an. And the series um, is the difference between two convergent series. We have the series of an plus absolute value of an we, which we have proved to be convergent minus the series of absolute value of an which is also convergent. So in the case where they're convergent, uh, this difference is really the sum of the difference of the general term, but that's it. that is just a series of an, which then converges. So what we have proved is that if my series of an is absolutely convergent, it is in particular convergent. So you should think of absolute convergence as a strong way of converging. And so we have seen that the Converse, of course, is false. You have series that are convergent but not absolutely convergent. In that case, we call them conditionally convergent. And we've seen at least one example, the series of negative 1 to the n over n. Now that means that in general, we can ask uh, a slightly uh, more refined question 
than usual about the convergence of series, we can ask if a series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. And that is what we're going to do on this uh, few examples here. Starting with a series from 1 to infinity of sine of n over n cube. So sine of n over n cube is going to have some positive and some negative terms, but um, it's not going to be necessarily an alternating series, um, because we may have several positive terms in a row, and then several negative terms in a row, and so on. Anyhow, if we look at the absolute value of the general term, that's sine of n over n cube, sine of n in absolute value is bounded above by 1. So, the absolute value of the general term is bounded above by 1 over n cube. And the series of general term 1 over n cube is a convergent p-series, because uh, it's a p-series for p equals 3, which is greater than 1. And so, by comparison, the series of absolute value of sine n over n cube is, comp is convergent, which means our series of general term sine n over n cube is absolutely convergent, in particular convergent. Now turning to the alternating series of general term negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n root n, we can look at the absolute value to see if the series of absolute values is convergent, in other words, if the series is absolutely convergent. And in this case, we get 1 over n root n, which is n to the 3 half. And the series of 1 over n to the 3 half is a p-series for p equals 3 half, which is greater than 1, and therefore it's convergent. That means the series of uh, absolute values of the general term is convergent, and our series is absolutely convergent, in particular convergent. Turning to the series from 1 to infinity of the alternating series negative 1 to the n minus 1 over root n. Uh, first we want to know if it's absolutely convergent, so we look at the uh, absolute value of the general term, which in this case is 1 over root n, or 1 over n to the 1 half. And this um, series of general term 1 over n to the 1 half is divergent, because it's a p-series for p equal 1 half, which is less than or equal to 1. And therefore that means that our series is not absolutely convergent. It could still be conditionally convergent. And to see that, well, we can use the alternating series test, because this is an alternating series the sequence of absolute value of the general term is 1 over root n, which is decreasing with limit 0, because root n is increasing with limit infinity, so the reciprocal is decreasing with limit 0. And therefore, according to the uh, alternating series test, our series is convergent. We have seen that it's not absolutely convergent, in other words, it's conditionally convergent. Let's take a look look now at the alternating series of general term negative 1 to the n over n plus 5. First we want to know if it's absolutely convergent, so we're going to look at the absolute value of the general term, which is 1 over n plus 5, and we want to know if the series of 1 over n plus 5 is convergent or not. We expect that series to behave uh, essentially like the series of 1 over n. 1 over n plus 5 is actually smaller than 1 over n, uh, and therefore the divergence of the series of 1 over n doesn't tell us anything about the divergence of the series of 1 over n plus 5 if we use direct comparison. However, we can use limit comparison and uh, compare 1 over n plus 5 with 1 over n. When we take the quotient, we get n over n plus 5, which clearly goes to 1 as n goes to infinity and 1 is a non-zero finite number, and therefore, by the limit comparison test, uh, we can conclude that the series of 1 over n plus 5 and the series of 1 over n behave the same way, and we know that the series of 1 over n is a divergent p-series. So by the limit comparison test, the series of 1 over n plus 5 is divergent, which means that our original series, the alternating one, is not absolutely convergent but it is um, conditionally convergent because this sequence of absolute value of the general term, 1 over n plus 5, is decreasing with limit 0, so by the alternating series test, uh, this is a convergent series. It's a convergent series that is not absolutely convergent, so it's conditionally convergent. 
Finally, we look at the series from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n multiplied by n over ln of n plus 1. n over ln over ln of n plus 1 is uh, positive and um, therefore we have an alternating series. So we can look at the um, absolute value of the general term. It's n over ln of n plus 1 and we want to know what is the behavior as n goes to infinity. And before we compare it with something else we should see if at least it goes to 0. But the limit of n over ln of n plus 1 is the same as the limit of x over ln of x plus 1 which we can calculate using the rule of de l'hôpital because this is an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. So the limit is going to be the same as the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. We get 1 for the derivative of x, 1 over x plus 1 for the derivative of natural log of x plus 1. So that simplifies as x plus 1, and the limit of x plus 1 at infinity is of course infinity. That means that the sequence of general term in absolute value goes to infinity, so the alternating uh, version, the, ge the general term of our series, negative 1 to the n times n over ln plus 1, is going to alternate between values that are large or negative large. In any case, it's not going to approach 0, the limit of the general term is not 0, and so by the nth term test, the series is divergent. I turn to the next video where we're going to revisit estimating the sum when we have a conversion series.